no, cal no calamity befalls, except by Allah's will, and whosoever believes in Allah, he guides his heart. Those who do not reflect during calamity and their hearts even become harder, Turkey and Syria earthquakes. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the bestower of mercy. Allah, the exalted, said. No calamity afflicts the people on earth i.e. a drought etc., nor a personal calamity, except that it has been recorded in the preserved tablet before I created the creations. Indeed, that is easy for me. Al-Hadid 22 Whatever difficulty afflicts you, O people, in yourselves and your wealth it is because of the sins that your hands earned. Allah overlooks many of them and does not take you to task for them. Ashura 30 O humankind, any good that pleases you, such as wealth or children, is from Allah. He has sent it to you through His grace. Whatever bad occurs to you in respect of your wealth or children is from your own self because of the sins you commit. I have sent you, O Prophet, as a messenger to all people to communicate to them the message of your Lord. Allah is enough of a witness to the truth of what you communicate from Him, because of the evidences and proof He has given you. Anissa, 79 No one is afflicted with any difficulty in himself, his wealth or his children except by Allah's decree and decision. Those who have faith in Allah and in His decree and decision, Allah guides their hearts to submit to His command and to be pleased with His decree. Allah knows everything, nothing is hidden from Him. A.K.H. Tagabon, 11 No calamity befalls, except by Allah's will, and whosoever believes in Allah, he guides his heart. Alkama, may Allah be pleased with him, said, This, Ayah, is about a person who is afflicted with a calamity and he knows that it is from Allah. So he becomes pleased with what Allah has decreed and submit to Allah's judgment, and he, or she, says, This is Allah's decree. I believe in Allah and we are pleased with Allah's decree. So Allah fills his heart with iman and tranquility, and he, or she, receives a great reward, i.e. due to his patience. Fadayl al-Amal pages 11-14 by Sheikh Muhammad bin Abdullah as sabayl Rahmahullah. The Messenger, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, If one of you is afflicted with a calamity, then let him reflect upon his calamity through me, i.e. my death. For indeed it is the greatest of calamities. Sahih al-Jami as sagir Number 347 Imam al kurtubi may Allah have mercy upon him, reported in his tafsir that Imam ibn Abdul Bar, may Allah have mercy upon him, said, Indeed, he, i.e. the messenger, spoke the truth. Because indeed the calamity that results from his death is greater than every calamity that will afflict the Muslim after him until the day of judgment. The revelation stopped and prophethood ceased, forever. al jami Liakam al-Quran Tafsir Surah al-Baqarah Ayayat 155-157 there is nothing more severe upon the Muslims than the death of Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, because indeed he was the most trustworthy and perfect guide for the Huma. Shuru Sunan ibn Majah pages 633-634 Finally, may Allah grant our Syria and Turkish brothers and sisters patience and relief, grant mercy upon those Muslims who lost their lives and grant a speedy recovery to the injured Amin. Those who do not reflect during calamity and their hearts even become harder. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the bestower of mercy. The obstinate proponents of kafir and shirk do not ponder. When the obstinate proponents of kafir and shirk seek to mock at the believers in questioning them as to why they have been afflicted in an earthquake, this statement further manifests their repugnant ignorance about their Lord. Firstly, even though these misguided ones are also afflicted, they do not reflect, as Allah, the exalted, stated. See they not that they are tried once or twice every year, with different kinds of calamities, disease, famine, etc. Yet, they turn not in repentance, nor do they learn a lesson, from it. Surah at Ayah 126 Are the hypocrites not taught a lesson by being tried by Allah, when He exposes their hypocrisy, once or twice a year? Then, despite knowing that Allah did this to them, they do not turn to Him from their disbelief, asking for forgiveness, and do not root out their hypocrisy. Or think about what happens to them and that it is from Allah. At Tawbah 126 Allah, the Exalted, said, Verily, we sent, messengers, to many nations before you, O Muhammad. And we seize them with extreme poverty, or loss in wealth, and loss in health with calamity so that they might believe with humility. When our torment reached them, why then did they not believe with humility? 
but their hearts became hardened, and Shaitan, Satan, made fair seeming to them that which they used to do. So, when they forgot, the warning, with which they had been reminded, we opened to them the gates of every, pleasant, thing, until in the midst of their enjoyment in that which they were given. All of a sudden, we took them to punishment, and lo! They were plunged into destruction with deep regrets and sorrows. So the roots of the people who did wrong were cut off. And all the praises and thanks be to Allah, the Lord of the Alamin, mankind, jinns, and all that exists. Surah Al Anam. Ayat 42 45. I sent messengers to many communities before you, O Messenger, but those communities denied their messengers and turned away from what they brought. I then tried them with poverty and sickness in order for them to submit and humble themselves before their Lord. If only they had humbled themselves before Allah, when his calamity came to them, and begged Allah to remove the calamity, then he would have shown them mercy. But they did not do that. Instead, their hearts became hard and they did not take notice and learn a lesson. Satan made the disbelief and sins that they were committing seem good to them, so they continued with those actions. When they ignored the warning of extreme poverty and sickness, and did not follow Allah's instructions, he enticed them further away from the truth by opening the doors of provision to them and giving them wealth after they were poor. He also blessed them with good health after they had suffered sickness. This continued until they were steeped in their pride and enjoyment of life, then his punishment came upon them suddenly, and they were overtaken by despair and lost all hope. The last of the disbelievers was cut off by being wiped out altogether when the help came to Allah's messengers. Thanks and praise is only for Allah, the Lord of the worlds, for destroying his enemies and helping his friends. al 42-45 so, when they ask why the believers are also afflicted, we remind them that just as their predecessors had no hope of entry into paradise due to their disbelief, whilst facing afflictions. Likewise, they are threatened with the same evil consequences if they die upon disbelief, whereas the believers have hope of entry in the eternal paradise. Allah, the Exalted, stated regarding the hardship in the battlefield. And don't be weak in the pursuit of the enemy. If you, believers, are suffering, hardships, then surely, they, too, are suffering, hardships, as you are suffering, but you have a hope from Allah, for the reward. i.e. paradise, that for which they hope not, and Allah is ever all-knowing, all-wise. Surah Nisa. Ayah 104. Do not become weak and lazy, O believers, in pursuing your disbelieving enemy. If you are suffering pain because of the killing and injury that afflicts you, then they too are suffering the same pain as well. So do not let their patience be greater than yours, because you have hope of reward, help and support from Allah, which they cannot hope for. Allah knows the conditions of His servants and is wise in His planning and legislation. Anissa 104 Allah, the Exalted, said, And certainly, we shall test you with something of fear, hunger, loss of wealth, lives and fruits, but give glad tidings to as Sabrin, the patient ones, etc. Who, when afflicted with calamity, say, truly. To Allah we belong and truly, to Him we shall return. They are those on whom are the salawat, i.e. blessings, etc., i.e. who are blessed and will be forgiven, from their Lord. And, they are those who, receive His mercy, and it is they who are the guided ones. Surah Al-Baqarah Ayayat 155-157 Allah will test people with different types of hardships, some with fear of those who are against them, hunger because of lack of food, lack of money because of losing it or difficulty gaining it. Loss of lives due to death from diseases and tragedies that kill people, or being martyred for the sake of Allah, and a lack of resources from the earth. Give good news, O Prophet, to those who are patient in the face of these hardships, of what will make them happy in this world and in the afterlife. The patient are those who, when they are struck by one of these hardships, say, in acceptance, that all power belongs to Allah, He deals with us as He wills. And we will return to Him on the Day of Judgment, and it is He who created us and showers us with many blessings, so, to Him is our return and our end. Those who possess these virtues are praised by Allah in the highest gathering of angels, and mercy descends on them. They are the ones guided to the path of truth. Al-Baqarah 155-157 Allah, the Exalted, said, No calamity befalls, except by Allah's will, and whosoever believes in Allah, he guides his heart. Alkama, may Allah be pleased with him, said, This, Ayah, is about a person who is afflicted with a calamity and he knows that it is from Allah. So he becomes pleased with what Allah has decreed and submit to Allah's judgment, and he, or she, says, this is Allah's decree. 
I believe in Allah and we are pleased with Allah's decree. So Allah fills his heart with iman and tranquility, and he, or she, receives a great reward, i.e. due to his patience. Fadayl al Amal pages 11-14 by Sheikh Muhammad bin Abdullah as sabayl Rahmahullah. The Messenger, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, If one of you is afflicted with a calamity, then let him reflect upon his calamity through me, i.e. my death. For indeed it is the greatest of calamities. Sahih al-Jami as sagir Number 347 Imam al-Qurtubi, may Allah have mercy upon him, reported in his tafsir that Imam ibn Abdul Bar, may Allah have mercy upon him, said, Indeed, he, i.e. the messenger, spoke the truth. Because indeed the calamity that results from his death is greater than every calamity that will afflict the Muslim after him until the day of judgment. The revelation stopped and prophethood ceased, forever. Al-Jami Liakam al-Quran Tafsir Surah al-Baqarah Ayayat 155-157 there is nothing more severe upon the Muslims than the death of Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, because indeed he was the most trustworthy and perfect guide for the Ummah. Shuru Sunan Ibn Majah pages 633-634 The Messenger, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, Amazing is the affair of the believer because there is good for him in every matter and this is not the case with anyone except the believer. If something pleasing comes to him, he thanks Allah and thus there is good for him, and if something harmful afflicts him, then he exercises patience and thus there is good for him. Sahih Muslim 2999 As for their claim about so-called natural disasters, we remind them first and foremost that There is neither might nor power, to alternate from one state to another nor move from one thing to another, except by Allah's will. Bukhari 6384 and Muslim 2704 Al-Harwi, may Allah have mercy upon him, said that Abu Haytham, may Allah have mercy upon him, said, Al-Hal, i.e. might, is Al-Haraka, movement, meaning. There is neither movement nor ability except by the will of Allah. And it is said, there is no might to repel evil nor any power to reach good except by the will of Allah. Sharsahi Muslim 487